we just got another cooler. It was it was the Asus 8th Gen, uh, their brand new one, their Ryu 3, and I was really excited. I was like, I wonder how this thing is gonna compare against the LS or LT deep cool coolers. And it made me think, you know what? I actually haven't reviewed either the LS or the LT deep cool cooler. So here we are, guys, it is time to review the deep cool LS series of coolers. Okay, so Deepcool has two coolers that are higher end, and that is the LT and LS series of coolers. Now the LT series is their high performance, and the LS series, which we have right here, are called elite performance. Now, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure where elite means less than high, but in this case, that's actually true. Anyway, now for the LS series of models, they have the 360, the 240, and also a 120 version, along with the more recent release of the brand new white models, which are stunning, by the way. Now, they've been out for a while, so instead of going with what the MSRP was supposed to be, I actually checked the prices on Newegg, and we got them for $139.99 for the 360, $109.99 for the 240, and $89.99 for the, like, six people who bought the 120 millimeter. So bringing up this chart, you can actually see price-wise, these are extremely competitive and I'm sure you're guessing by my intro that they aren't only well priced but they're also elite performance to use deep cools own verbiage so a bit more about these coolers this is their fourth generation pump this is not a standard Ace Tech. this is their own design a lot like the um, one that we saw from EK uh, in their nucleus series so um, I'm a big fan by the way of well one of the things that I really love about the engineering on this is that it's got a massive square copper plate that does a great job of covering the entire IHS on either your Intel or your Ryzen CPUs. Now, one of the coolest things about this AIO, <laughs> see what I did there, are the fans. Now, these are the new Deepcool FC120 fans. It can pump out 85.85 CFM, which is crazy good. 3.27 millimeters of H2O, um, which, is, which is okay, and about 33 decibels in terms of their sound at max load, which don't worry, you don't have to take my word for it. We're gonna get this all installed and we'll actually show that. So we're gonna show those. Now for those numbers, it's best to actually show you what that means from a cooling performance standpoint versus just saying, hey, this is what it actually does. Because really what you care about is when this whole combination gets together is how well it actually cools the CPU. In terms of support, you do have Intel, which means you can do all the way through LGA 1700. On the the Intel side as well as 2066 and 2011 socket support. Now if that means absolutely nothing to you then you're probably covered as most folks are either LGA 1200, 1150 something or LGA 1700 for 12th or 13th gen. Now for AMD you've got Threadripper, AM4 and the new 7000 series AM5. Now before we go any further let's go ahead and unbox and install our cooler. So I kind of want to unbox the, the white one but it's it's so brand new and this one's actually been opened before so let's go ahead and leave this one sealed for later and let's open up this one. So just like come on let's pop in here and let's take a look at what we got. So this is how it's how it's boxed up. So for the unboxing, and if you've seen my EK Nucleus review, which we'll talk about a little bit later, you'll actually see that um, we showed this off a little bit. So there it is right there, pretty straightforward. So you've got pretty standard packaging. You got your three fans, you've got your cooling plate, and it's also got this really cool, um, basically cable manager or tube manager for your tubes. There is potentially pre-applied thermal paste. I might actually have to open the other one to verify that because I just realized that uh, I, I don't know. So we're gonna have to open the white one to confirm that yes, there is pre-applied thermal paste or not. So here we go. Oh, this is actually pretty much already open. That might actually be brand new. What do you think? Yes, no? No, no pre-applied thermal paste because this is a brand new AIO, so I know for sure this one has not been opened. So no pre-applied thermal paste, just as an FYI. That was one of the comments that we actually got in the uh, the videos and somebody was like, oh, nobody tests the pre-applied thermal paste. Well, I'm still not gonna test it because there's none on here. So there you go. Sorry to make you sad, buddy. At least you saw the white one unboxed now though. Nobody can say, I'm not gonna get a comment that says you should have unboxed the white one. I did. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's put this together real quick and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and mount it. So inside, let's take a look at what materials you get. You do get your Intel bracket. You've also got uh, your RGB and uh, power for that. You've got your, this is your bracket and mounting clips for Intel. And then you've got your mounting clips and everything you need for AMD. Uh, and then you've got your fan screws. You've got your mounting to actually mount it onto the motherboard. Oh, and then also you've got 
Instructions! There it is right there, you got your instructions. Okay, so let's get this put together real quick and I'm gonna show you a little bit. Now one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount it both on an Intel and on an AMD so you guys can see both of those ways that you do it. So what we'll do is we'll just set this all up so we can show and, and kind of walk you through the installation. So first thing I'm gonna show you, which I think is really cool, is how these fans work. So you can actually see that these are the cables. Now the cables themselves are actually proprietary. And then the way that they daisy chain together is they literally just plug into themselves. So you just pop it in like that. And then now these are actually daisy chained, which is actually pretty cool. So it makes it a whole lot easier to do the setup here. There we go. Okay, so we'll do some fun wow stick action. Okay, so. There we go. So we now have all of our fans mounted. It's ready to go. So let me just talk a little bit about the cables that you do have on this. So what you do is you have this one, whichever fan that's closest to it. So in this case, we have one open one here. This fan is essentially going to plug in to here. So we essentially get this plugged in and then now this is ready to plug into everything else. So we're just gonna plug that in. When you actually have this is you're gonna take this and you're gonna plug it in and that's essentially going to extend your fans, and then later on, we're gonna plug all of that stuff essentially into this. It doesn't have a name, guys, or I just tell you what the name is, but it doesn't actually have a name. So just then what you do is you take this, and you plug this onto here, and then now your unit is basically ready to go. First thing we're gonna do, let's get this thing, let's get the pump and everything mounted. I'm gonna show you how to mount a pump on Intel, and then after I'm done with this, we'll actually show you how to do the same process on AMD, so that way we're just comprehensive and it doesn't feel like we're doing one over the other. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our thermal paste, put a dab in the middle, just like so. The thing I do that is different than most people, and actually all the smart people do it this way, is you then take a spatula, you cover the whole thing. We'll have links down in the description below if you wanna do that. But the main reason for this is especially on Intel, you wanna make sure you've got the whole IHS and that you have an even coverage. There we go, so nice even coverage. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab this, basically flip your motherboard over, just pops on just like this. So now we just need to grab our materials for Intel, which is just like this. So inside this bag is all this stuff. Now, the one thing that is super important is that there are two different kind of plastic bits. For 12th gen, use the dented ones. For anything else, LGA11, use these. And for LGA220, use these. You'll see the sockets, but these are the more than likely the two you're gonna use. We're just gonna pop these on here, like so. They'll sit on just like this. Now for the Intel bracket install, you'll actually need these materials, which is, these are the four mounts, the four screws to put in the brackets, and then the actual brackets themselves. So now what we're gonna do is with the deep cool in the corner, like so, you're gonna take your bracket, you're gonna make sure that you have the dimples, see how this is like dimpled versus flat on the other side? You're gonna take that dimple and you're gonna put them and hold them just like this. Then using your magical one-handed screwdriver ability, simply screw it in. Now, so then from the other direction, it'll look just like that. Okay, then what you're gonna do, is you're then going to take this, you're gonna pop it down over the socket, then you're gonna take these little corner piece, corner screw bits, and now secure it to the board. You're gonna do that with each corner. And there you go, now you have your pump mounted on an Intel board. Let's pop over and show you how to do it on an AMD board. So for AMD, it's a little bit different. So we have an AMD board right here, so we're just gonna show you how to install it. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our thermal paste. Let's go ahead and do it right. So we're gonna pop this in here, cover the entire IHS. Now, the thermal paste I use is Noctua NH1. The main reason I use that is A, it performs very well NH1 or NH2. Um, and the, main, the other thing I like about it is very viscous, which means it's really easy to spread. The reason I cover the entire IHS is because I wanna make sure that I get full coverage and so when I can test my coverage, like I might, you might see low temperatures, you can take it off and see if the cold plate is officially covering the entire thing. So we're just gonna cover the entire HS. So now that we have our thermal paste on, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our socket ready. So we're just gonna remove this and make sure when you do this, you save them guys. And there we go. And then in here, so you have your AMD set. So you're gonna grab these right here and put one in each corner. These are for a different socket. I'm just gonna show you mostly AM5. So now what you'll need is you'll need this bracket, just like this, and then inside of this, you're gonna want these four tiny screws. This is in the bag that also has these. 
So this is all in one bag. And then the way that this works, because this actually matters, is you have to put towards the bottom, so the Deep Cool logo is in the bottom right-hand corner. You're gonna put this one right here, and you're gonna screw it in. So again, Deep Cool, and then you have this done at the bottom, like so. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing with the top one. Just put it up at the top, and there you go. Now you're set up for AMD. All you're gonna do for here, just gonna set it down just like this, just like that, and then you just put on your four screws. And boom, bada boom, bada bing, your thing is done, and then you just tighten it until it stops, and then boom, there you go. You've now got a deep cool installed on AMD. We've shown you how to basically have it popped onto an Intel board and an AMD board. Now let's just get this uh, quickly onto our bench. So that way we can show you the rest in terms of hooking it up. Now, uh, one thing I will say about this guy is what I'm showing you is not gonna be anything like your installation process is going to be. But the one thing I did wanna show you is for the radiator, obviously when you put these on, the screws that you're going to use in this case are gonna be these little small screws right here and that's how you're gonna mount your radiator onto your case. So this cable right here is your pump cable. What you're gonna do is you're gonna connect this either in the CPU optional or if you have an AIO pump header on your motherboard. And then you're just gonna have to look to see. In this case, I have CPU optional, so I'm gonna plug this into CPU optional. Now this one is coming from the ones that we showed you how to hook up earlier. So on here, you've got a SATA power cable, you've got a fan, PWM fan control, and then you've got RGB. So we're gonna take this fan one, we're gonna plug that into, this one is gonna go into our CPU fan header, which is right just look for your CPU fan on my motherboard, it's right there. This cable is for RGB, so you're gonna to wanna to find a triple RGB header. Um, so on mine, I have one right here in the top right, and I'm gonna plug this in right here. The last cable you have is a SATA power cable. You're gonna cable run this. This is gonna go into a SATA power that plugs into your PSU just like that. So now that's done. Now you have one more cable left, and it's on your pump header, and this is going to plug in to your fans. So again, you're gonna run this up and then if you look, you're, it's gonna be really hard to show you, but it, up here, it's gonna plug directly back into your fans, right up here. So it's daisy chained in with the rest of your fans. Okay, and so there you go. Now we actually have a completely set up Decool LS720. I showed you basically how to do it. One of the things worth mentioning, of course, anytime is that because of how simple it is um, with just hooking up the RGB header to your motherboard, um, you are only going to get as much RGB support as your motherboard does. So in the case of Asus, you might get cool things like Starry Night and stuff like that. Um, but in certain like lower end cases, like on inexpensive ASRock, you might just be able to have like Wave. Now that's kind of one of the differences when you look Look at some AIOs, like for instance, the Corsair ones, which are significantly almost twice as much in terms of cost. There's a lot you can do because of things like Corsair IQ uh, in terms of uh, what that support and stuff like that means for their RGB and, and their, their monitoring that are limited and why it makes sense how it's so much more expensive. Um, but again, that's gonna be completely up to you in terms of if you feel like that cost is justified. Okay, so now for the brass tacks. How does this thing actually perform versus the competition? Well, we put this up against a smattering of recently released AIOs, including some of the new Gen 8 Asetek coolers. Now for our test system, we use all of these AIOs with 360 millimeters. So we basically, we test the 360 millimeter of family. Guys, I know you guys say, can you test the 240? Can you test the 120? There's, it, it, it's hard to test them all and not all families do. So again, we, we stick with something in terms of general cooling. You understand if you purchase like an EK Nucleus versus a Deep Cool LS720 versus like something like a NZXT Kraken that you understand where it's gonna cool relatively. We put all of these AIOs into the same system. So it's inside of a Lee and Lee Land Cool 3. It's cooling a core i7-13700K. Now this is another question that I also get a lot. Roby, what about a 13900K? Not all 360 millimeter AIOs can actually cool a 13 uh, 900K. So the reason we use a 13.7 is that a 360 can cool a 13.7 without an issue. So you actually see that range in terms of its ability to cool versus just having it crap out at 100, you know, 100 degrees Celsius. So that's why we, we do a 13.700K only. We also use Noctua NFA and NFF fans for the case. So it's pretty much the ideal situation for any air cooler in terms of just how much cooling uh, these, uh, how much air this AIO gets to make sure that it's the most effective it can be. So you can see here under load, this is the the chart that everybody cares about. You can see that this LS720 cools right in line with other coolers on the market, but 
for literally $100 less. So you're talking about your H150, um, your Nucleus, which are you know over $200 plus. This one is cooling at that same capability for less than that for just north of over 100 bucks. For CPU idle temperatures, you can actually see that this system is actually running a little cooler, which is awesome and even more impressive given that this cooler, again, is $100 less than most of the coolers on the less. So in fact, what we do is let's flip this and look at it from like a pure value standpoint, which is what this chart that we're showing you here is if you consider the cost to cool, the Deepcool LS720 is clearly the winner over the competition in terms of its cost for basically degree cooled. So one thing you guys always ask me about in, in which, when it comes up there is what is the noise comparison? And it's something we're gonna start adding from now on. But let me be super clear that this isn't actually a terribly useful piece of data, given that it could be completely different in your case, given the fans that you're gonna use, how your air, case's airflow characteristics are. But under load, let's go ahead and see what this is like and run these fans at max. Here we have, we have everything set up. We're gonna show you the volume of the fans at max. So right now, if we stop talking and uh, Chanel stops texting on her phone, just kidding, it's fine, Chanel, it's just not gonna, but here we go. Now we're gonna start the test, so 47. So as you can see, it sits to around about 60 decibels, 58 to 60 decibels, which is actually relatively quiet compared to other ones that we've done. Now, the other thing too that I do have running right now is the pump is at 100% and people are asking, hey, what is the, is there a pump wine or anything like that? So again, we're running at 100%. So at idle, I mean like it's, I mean it's near silent. There's no, there's no wine, there's nothing like that. So I'm not hearing anything. We did see a couple people complain about the LS720 in terms of pump wine. I'm not hearing that. I heard that a lot more on the EK than I did on this. This is absolutely quiet. Okay, well I think that is pretty much everything uh, for this review. Uh, and it includes all the feedback we've gotten from all of our other recent AI reviews. These are something that have been new to the channel. We've been taking that feedback to make these better. So you should definitely check those out because we just did one on the new Corsair XT series, which is their newest one that includes the new AF fans, uh, which you should check out right here. And then also we have the brand new one from EK, the new Nucleus series with both their LED and their normal versions as well, which is like the new AIO to beat in terms of performance. Uh, and that is available right here. Um, but I remember in both of these cases, that is quite a jump in price. So worth checking out, but understand they're gonna be significantly more expensive than this one. So it's hard not to argue that this right now is one of the best AIOs on the market. And not just because it performs well, but also due to its price. It has a lot of the modern installation features that are nice, like daisy chainable fans, minimal cables, no overhead on software. So the only really limitations that you have is the RGB, etc., that come from what you have based on your motherboard. But Deepcool has the whole package here. We're talking about the right price and the right mix of features to give you something that not only looks great in your build, but it keeps your hardware under control. And the best part, it doesn't break the bank. And that is a heck of an option. But you know what? It's not about what I think, it's about what you think. Now, what do you think about the Deepcool LS series of coolers? And have you considered a Deepcool cooler before? That was like almost a tongue twister. Um, and do you think the lack of something like IQ and RGB stuff limitations is actually a pro or a con? I'd love to know all that down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button with that like button and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a video like this over on Robitech. Now, we do use things like this inside of our live builds, which you can check over at Robitech Live uh, over here on YouTube. That is every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, starting at 5 p.m. Pacific. And if YouTube's not your thing, which would be weird, 
that you're seeing this, but you can also watch us over on Twitch if maybe that's your thing for live streaming. Also, we have an amazing community. If you have questions about this or want to know more about AIOs or how to install them, etc., uh, you can head over to our Discord community, discord.gg slash robytech. We have other tech and PC enthusiasts that love to talk about these very subjects. And lastly, you can follow us at Robitech absolutely everywhere. Um, we're on TikTok even, so it's, it's amazing until that's banned and then we won't be on TikTok anymore. So that is it for this episode. We hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.